Here I go. Hold on. Oh <laughs> my god! I thought just like the worst noise. That was called a burp. <laughs> It was like a little. My throat just made the worst. It was. It came out and it was. Hey, y'all! Welcome back to the Don't Mom Alone podcast. I'm your host. Heather McFadden, and this is still the place where I get to walk alongside you and connect you with people and resources so you know that you don't mom alone. And as you all know, we do something a little special the first Friday of the month. We get sidetracked with my friend, Cynthia Yanoff. She is the host of the Mesmerize podcast. And today we have a special guest, as you heard, Rachel Green. She won our giveaway and she is a listener just like you. And we have a pretty fun conversation uh, talking about why are Cynthia and I even friends. Uh, we share what God's teaching us lately, which leads to several interesting conversations. And of course, we get sidetracked, as always. Come laugh with us. Here we go. <laughs> and we're back, people. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? We have a special guest. Rachel <laughs> Rachel Green, welcome to This is a great start. Hi, Rachel. Rachel. I did not burp, but we're so glad you're here. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, oh. Rachel, you're adorable. Well, so adorable. We were not one second disappointed that you weren't Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> that gets everybody. Yeah, I think that's a fun name to have. And I married into it. So, you know, it wasn't my name always. I married into it. And I, I mean, right after my wedding and I made my first appointment and they were like, what's the name? And then from then on, it's constantly like from friends. No, not so much. Oh, okay. Are you spelled the same at least? Like you don't have a Rachel with a second A and a green with the, I don't know. I don't really know if I know how she spelled it on the show. So I don't know. Right. Okay, so Rachel, thanks for buying this one's book. I don't know if you've read any of it yet. I am I am to no chapter pressure. 16. I'm almost through it. Oh, that's so awkward how you're like, I don't know if you've read any yet. Long haul. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh. It's kind of like my response with a book you asked me about. It's like, I've looked through it. Um, oh yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least you've gone, you've you've read it, you've read stories. Have have you laughed at all? You learned yes. anything? I've laughed a lot. I've um I've laughed a lot. I've connected with a lot of it. I've, I'm enjoying it so far. Oh, thanks, Rachel. Look at that review. Life is messy. God is good. I mean. life. Next book, <laughs> Life is Burpee. Do you, do you want to know what my favorite hey. part is so far? Yeah. yeah. Like the mm-hmm. ser- my serious favorite part besides the fun parts, right? My favorite serious part is the part where we talk about you're given the park lessons and oh, oh yeah. yeah lessons for the playground yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the playground um yeah yeah no and my one of my favorite things is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable to bring others in mm. and that is ugh, I love it I love it I love it and that's just one of the things that for me personally has always been a conviction for me like I kind of thrive in the uncomfortable and sometimes mm. sometimes I probably enjoy making other people uncomfortable too much you know I'm a little guilty of that too. Like I I have been the friend that's been like, why don't you close us in prayer since you don't like praying? (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. It is one of those things like when we're talking about like getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and bringing other people in, because I think in theory, we, especially like as Christians, like we're like, we're going to make a seat for everyone at the table. But then it gets kind of weird because then you're like, well, I don't know that person. They probably have friends or I don't know mm-hmm. if they fit. Like it really has to be super intentional and uncomfortable. And and, and I'm not always great at that. And I'm an extrovert. And I yeah. love literally somebody walked by her window a minute ago in her office. I'm like, I wonder who that is. And I was like, why do I care? <laughs> but but it is um, it is even hard for this extrovert. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to have to realize like having people over. And last night we had over the pastor of our church and we go to a really large church in Dallas and I'd never it's humble brag. She had the pastor. <laughs> oh yeah, that was exactly. Um, we were late because we we're coming from a baseball game and we picked up dinner, like literally take out and showed up like about the time they drove up, you know, nothing like being on top of, but, um, I'm sure they didn't mind. Ended up loving it so much yeah. fun, but yeah. it was a little like, I'm like, is this going to be awkward or weird or whatever? Yeah. And I'm just so, I'm always glad when I do it. So right. yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. hey, what'd you have for breakfast? There's a reason I'm asking. <laughs> Okay, um, I had a spinach and mushroom egg white frittata. She's my people. <laughs> yeah, She's my yeah. people. She yeah. is. Should I leave? It was yeah. it was meal prep. So like I made it over the weekend. It's not like I got up and whipped that together. Right. So even more my people. <laughs> All I had to do was warm it up in the microwave. Yeah, but she meal prepped. That means like spent time on a future time. I did do that. To think intentionally about what she's going to eat today. Huh. Um, you know, <laughs> what do you think Cynthia had for breakfast? Let's guess. Let's tell ask. Us, Cynthia, tell what do you have for breakfast? Well, let me just say this. Uh, this is a new segment I'm implementing <laughs> in Sidetrack, and it's called I Don't Even Know How We're Friends, um, <laughs> that I'm, I'm implementing with Heather. Because um, on the way in, she was so thoughtful, and she, like, messaged me. Like, we audio text each other. And so typically, instead of text text, we're always in the car. And she's like, hey, I'm driving by Sonic or Chick fil And Chick-fil-A. You want a drink? And so I was like, no, I'm good. I've got something. And then um, we all heard about it at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Our, our, you put the light out. Our light went out. Uh, oh, what a doctrine. This feels like us. A doctrine schnaffle. Okay. All right. So anyway, yes, our light is out over here. But so anyway, she starts telling me out her breakfast. All right. And so tell Rachel and everybody else what you had for breakfast. This is new because I went on this craft retreat. Don't oh, be jealous. Okay. Um, you can be, it's fine. Uh, and then some of the gals, you know, you're hanging out, you're all eating together, you're talking, and they're doing this, uh, eating plan from a book called women, hormones and food. Okay. Okay. And I'm like, I'm all in on that. And so they told me what they had for breakfast and I've been doing this week and it's delicious. I do a little twist. They do like a keto version yogurt, but I do coconut milk yogurt. Okay. Some blueberries, walnuts. Chia seed, flax seed, pumpkin seed, a little bit of honey. It's delicious. I bet it is. I don't know what to do with that. Wait, Listen. so what did you eat, Cynthia? I well, um, um, diet Dr Pepper. They got the Dr Pepper. The beginning. Calm down, everyone. <laughs> I had a diet Dr Pepper in three. Have you ever had the mini saltines? They're just a real delight. And I got what nutritional value does <laughs> a let me saltine tell you. offer your body and your brain? Okay. Well, my brain, that's why I talk like this and do stupid stuff because there's nothing in there. But let me tell you what why. What supplements did you take this morning? Okay, that's the point. So I don't take anything, not even a gummy vitamin, people, not a thing, right? And so one of my friends was saying, this is getting ready to get so nobody cares. Um, I need to be taking some vitamin that like keeps the, the everything moving, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the Costco, everyone. <laughs> Oh, I could talk days about the Costco. What did you um, get? And I got this, I mean, 7,000 of this vitamin, okay? Um, I'll have to get back to you on which one. I already forgot. Something glass guy, I don't know. And so it makes my stomach hurt, right? Like, not like in the good way I'm keeping nature. it's trying to deal with all the diet, Dr. Pepper, it is. and the saltines. So my stomach was killing me all day yesterday. So this morning, I threw down a couple of saltines and a diet Dr. Pepper. And then this one is like, oh, I had my flaxseed and my, I'm like, like, where do you, like, where do you buy? You don't even want to know about my lion's mane. And Where do you buy all these seeds? And I don't like the white word Costco. seed. Costco. I bought everything that I put in there at Costco. Even the and then I got here and she's like, do you want me to make you one? I'm like, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> This message is sponsored by Greenlight, and I'm thrilled to get to partner with Greenlight because we have been using them since my oldest was a freshman, and now he's a senior. When we were moving from the childhood years where they spend most of their time with us into more independence, and they would be out and about spending money, and I asked my brother how he handled it with his kids, and he told us about Greenlight. And it's so awesome because each of my boys have an account, and we have a parent account. And we can move money from our account into their account, back and forth, if they want to pay um, us for something. Or we can even automate allowances and manage chores. So if I want to say, hey, here's a one-time chore of washing the car, and they get uh, the $2 for doing it. Or maybe it's just like your family handles chores in a certain way. I'm, I'm a big fan of the whole notice and do. Notice what needs to be done and do it. And you're contributing to the family and you get this allowance. Uh, that can be automatic and it goes into their account and you get to see where they're spending money. So, you know, if they're buying all their friends Starbucks and you had no idea until you get your credit card bill, well, this is a way to immediately know, like, why did you spend $70 at Starbucks? Uh, they also can see 
as their account drains, how quickly it drains, and they can learn how to save money. There's an option to save and give. And I love that it also, I'd learned about this now that they're a partner, they have an in-app financial literacy game called Level Up, where they can build money confidence through little videos and challenges and mini games. And it's not just me and my older brother who use Greenlight. More than 6 million parents and kids use it to learn how to make responsible financial choices. So let's stop putting off the whole money talk or stressing about how to transition into adulthood. Let's start putting our kids on the right path. Sign up for Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash DMA. That's greenlight.com slash DMA to try Greenlight for free. Greenlight.com slash DMA. So, okay, well, hey, here's what, that's our sidetrack for the morning. What has been getting you sidetracked lately, Rachel? Like, Good or bad? I mean, helpful or unhelpful? Yeah. So I think what's funny is I think what gets me sidetracked is staying to, like trying to not get sidetracked. I find myself spending probably too much time going over the calendar and like ruminating, like terrified I'm going to forget of what kid has to be where and when and how do I, you know, and then the husband's schedule and, and put it all together. I think sometimes I'll be trying to work in the calendar and then all this time has passed and I just, and I keep going back to the calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me start with this. How old are your kids and you have a job? Are you full-time? Like, tell us a little bit about where you are. Yeah. So, um, I have two boys. One is about to be 13. Yay. Mm. And I have one that is eight. So two boys, I'm married, I have a husband, and I do work full time. I'm a physical therapist by trade, but now I teach in a physical therapist assistant program at a community college that involves a one hour commute each way. Wow. So that's the only reason you listen to us. You you guys are my entertainment during my commute. Yes. (laughs) Yes. She's like, could they put out more episodes? That's what I heard her say. Yeah. Oh, you want more? She needs one for the way and one for the way back every day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I cannot actually speak into that, like getting off track by trying to stay off track because I feel like I live a little off track. And um, you I, pack in the calendar. Well, There's I mean, there's not a lot of downtime. I don't have a lot of downtime. That's true. Um, I will say this, and this is a little sidetrack too, but Valentine's, you know, as, as we're taping this, Valentine's was last week. And so I was thinking it was like, I think Valentine's was on a, was it Tuesday? Wednesday. It was Wednesday. I thought it was Thursday. So I did order from Amazon. Like I was ahead in that regard, but I put him to bed on Tuesday night because I'm like, we'll do the from JB on my little one on all the dumb Valentines. I mean, the lovely Valentines. We'll do that. Well, I put him to bed. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm home alone. I realize, oh my gosh, it's tomorrow. So I get in there and I'm like, okay, do I just write JB's name on it, but try to act like he wrote it <laughs> so I don't get judged by the first grade moms. And then I'm like, who cares? And then listen, this pack I ordered required a hot glue situation. I won't go into it. It's real boring, but I did all that. And I sit down. I'm like, okay, done. Whatever it is, what it is. I forgot the Valentine's box. So then I had to decorate it. Long story short, I'm not going to bore y'all through all of this. When I got the sheet out that I had had for two weeks, but never read because I am not you, Rachel, and I wasn't ahead of it. I had to have a Valentine's box for this kid that we're supposed to decorate together. It's good mommy bonding time. Well, I'm like, well, he, that's dead. And so Anna Valentine snack, I tell a, snack. a teenage son, please stop by the targets, the Walmarts, the somewhere, get me stickers. He says on text, cause I'm home alone. I can't leave. And my kid's in bed. Can I go to a gas station? No, <laughs> like, no, one does no. not decorate a box from a gas station. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he went, he went to the CVS and do you know what he brought home? CVS is a drugstore. I don't know if everybody has this. Do you know what he brought home to decorate the box, which I explained to him what I needed. Hershey kisses and lollipops. That's perfect. That's horrible. It works. So what? That's what you had to do the hot glue. I on. hot glued them on. Hershey kisses melted everywhere. It was a whole thing. It looked like poop on the side of his box. It was dripping down. Last <laughs> like thing. a poopy Valentine's box. Okay. Last thing on this is I didn't have a snack for him. I mean, I have snacks in our house, but I didn't have the Valentine's snack. We had been at a Super Bowl party. Somebody sent me home. I don't know why with a bag of cookies that those like um those they call them Jesus cookies at our school. Oh, we call yeah Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I took them yesterday for my son's birthday. Okay, they're like the the the, sugar- the really good sugar cookies with amazing frosting. Yes, but you can yeah. get them anywhere. Walmart. Tar- we call them Jesus cookies Jesus in our world. Cookies. They save your soul. <laughs> we threw them, and I had thrown them in the trash. You know, I did. They Rachel, resurrected. No. Rachel, oh, sure did resurrect no. out of the trash. 
And I put them in his bag and they went, they were in a Ziploc, but they weren't at the top. They were at the very, I mean, they, the bottom of the trash. I dug them out. That was Valentine's. I tell that incredibly boring story. I hope someone didn't just fall asleep and swerve off the road. that was commuting it. like you did. But I say it. that because I hear what you're saying. I'm being sidetracked by calendaring, being organized and scheduled. But for someone like me, I'm like, gosh, I would love that to be my biggest sidetrack mm-hmm. issue. That's well, and I feel like you asked about balance, like is balance a thing? And it just sounds like when you're working full time and you have a commute and you have two kids in the stage they're in, you don't have a driver right. yet. Yeah. That balance is real, real hard. Right. And like, it sounds like you are balanced because- No, yeah, that's an illusion. Then. <laughs> it's this like, there's an imagined balance of this superhero person or is the there's the, I'm getting where I need to be bare minimum and like let's be good with that. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like it's all about the expectations of what do we think this is supposed to look like? Right. Mm-hmm. Do and we I- think I mean, you're doing all you had a frittata for the breakfast. Don't say it. Don't say it like that again. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's not a frittata. <laughs> it is. It's it's special. She's caring for herself. Like that to me sounds like you're even doing the extra work of like you have shells behind you that look cute. Well, I'm just saying, bravo. I think that as best a person can balance, it sounds like you got a lot of balls in the air. And yeah, I agree. The, the non essential ones are dropping. That's the key. Can like, I say one which other ones thing are important about that, Rachel, too, is that. That I do think, and we get caught up. I mean, I know, or I do. Like, I used to worry, like, I can't, I'm not that mom that can apparently do a Valentine's box, but I'm also not that mom that can, like, run to the school at the last second, Mm -hmm. or maybe I don't have anything prepped in bed. You know, that feeling, a little bit of that guilt from working Mm -hmm. or traveling or whatever your thing is. And I'm telling you, and maybe I'm just making myself feel better, but I think Heather would um, echo this sentiment is that my kids are better for it. My kids Mm -hmm. are better for me not being available at every whim for everything. Like you tell me you need Mexican sugar cookies at 11 o'clock the (laughs) night before that true story. I'm like, sorry, like ain't going to happen. Can't do it. So, and and they know that now, like you got to learn it once. And then they realize like it does take some prep time. So, I mean, it's not my eight year old's fault that I didn't read the sheet that came home, mind you, but nonetheless, all that to say, like you're, I think you got, you're doing good. And everyone out there, like we're speaking to all of y'all that are trying to keep all the balls in the air. Like your kids will not be worse off because one dropped. Well, and it can feel like, oh, the, the friendship one's not balanced. Mm. Like I'm not spending enough, you know, the pressure of like, I'm not, and I kind of view it as kind of like I interviewed a nutritionist and she says, you got to look at the whole instead of just the day, like the whole week, or are they overall eating a variety? It's kind of like overall, if you look at three months, like, are you kind of hitting the boxes is, and then it's like noticing maybe what needs attention. Like mm-hmm. we talked about with Laurel Denise or like that cultivating what matters when we went through what areas of your life are kind of getting the lower number. Mm-hmm. It's like, sometimes it's just a season where you're like, huh, that might need a little more attention. Right. But you're not beating yourself up. Like what's wrong with me that this is. We should do that this summer. Did you hear the one, Rachel, where we went through like each of the different areas and we ranked ourselves? I think that should be a mid-year review too. Oh my gosh. And we see how we're doing because I'm going to make a frittata. (laughs) (laughs) I want to hear your review of your frittata. (laughs) Frittata. Will you make me one right now? No, but do you like spinach? No, sure. Um, I don't believe you. No, I don't mind it. I mean, I enjoy a cream spinach at the steakhouse and I enjoy a um, spinach dip at the party. And okay, let's talk about this too, Rachel. This is um, critically important information we're giving everyone. You're welcome, people. Um, that's I want to hear from Rachel too a little bit. That's why. Are you okay just us talking to each other? No, she's going to talk to us about okay. this. All right. Okay. Rachel, um, and this is why this show isn't Patreon, by the way. <laughs> Nobody paid a penny for this. No, it's free. All free. All free. Rachel, what's your drink of choice? Hmm. If we were going to buy you something before this interview, what would we get you? Like any time of the day, drink of choice. You could tell us your it's different five ones. Somewhere <laughs> we don't care. No, like if whatever you know. So, like I, I start my day with a hot tea, and I end my day with a hot tea, but I don't like it in the middle. Okay, but what kind of tea? Like, where? What do you tend towards? Tea English wise? breakfast, just plain classic kind of hot tea. You cream and sugar? No. Uh, no, I don't do cream or sugar. Straight up. Yeah, um, I do, but I do really like. Have you ever used or tried those um, those Jordan skinny syrups? Yes. Yeah, I pour a little mm-hmm. bit of that. In. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just kidding. It gives it a little flavor yeah. without adding any unnecessary things. Right, yeah. So, so I will. I put a little bit of a splash of that in there. But during the day, uh, water and like I like all the trendy flavored waters. You know, I like to try all those. Um, she knows what you're talking about, Cynthia's. But I do like my one Coke Zero a day, though. It's a pick. It's a oh. pick me up. I gotta have a Coke Zero. <laughs> Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord. <laughs> Y'all can get your Coke Zeros together. Um, okay. And so yeah. Heather, um, again, the episode of I Don't Know How We're Friends, she, I was like, what can I ever pick up for you? And she's like, I like coffee, but I only like can have coconut milk or I don't know. It went through this whole thing. And then I like, then it was ranch water. Is that booze? What's ranch water? I don't even know what that is. I said if I was in a season of cocktails and we're out of place, I would get a ranch water, which is Topo Chico, silver tequila, and lime, fresh lime. Mm. Oh, Okay. Okay. It's a pretty low calorie, low sugar, low carb. High octane. <laughs> no, it's not. It gets the job done. <laughs> this, this is the Baptist. This is the Baptist talking. No. The, yeah. Yeah. The Baptist. The I teetotaler know. over here. Completely. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm secure in my salvation. So um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Rachel. Yes. Do you forget to put on deodorant? Do you ever? No, she doesn't. I don't listen. I double applied because I didn't know if I was going to be nervous about doing this with y'all. So I yeah. did. I did double work today. Make- but did she ever forget? Probably not. She's a PT. Like that's an active job. Yeah, I don't mm. usually forget the deodorant. I totally forgot to put on deodorant this morning. Um, when I got here, I walked in and she's like, "Hey, one of our sponsors," and she's showing me the deodorant thing. I'm like, "This is like a special tube. They have the stick. I have I some of that. I, Lou, yes, I use it. You've heard mm-hmm. of it." This is the whole body though. This is cream. So, I know. Well, I had a whole body on my pits. And then I, and then I was like, what do I do with the leftover? So then I like I put on my hands and then I go, Oh, I just had my hands in my pits. So it's a whole process at Heather's kitchen <laughs> counter this oh, morning. Like we videoed it, people. You can get yeah, lavender sage. I'm curious. It says 72 hour odor control. Have you used it? You use it, Heather, or have you not used it yet? I've been using the stick that's like a coconut smell. I yeah. really like it. So the the tube, the cream stuff, this, uh, you might want to edit this out. I don't know. TMI. Um, TMI. Yeah, go. TMI. Like I put, when I know I'm going to be sweating a lot, like the under boob region, oh. it works real good right there. You want some right now? No, or on video, <laughs> but I'll do it. <laughs> what do you think? Rachel's right. That was a good idea. That's a really good idea to use the use the Lumi for the underboob. So what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, we were saying Loom. It's wrong. It's Lumi, which it, is fancier. And what do you think about this packaging? I think the packaging's so awesome. And I love that I came in your house. I'm like, I forgot to get her. And you handed me what looks like kind of a small lotion bottle. So it's like I like that because it's just discreet. sitting on your counter. Yeah, yeah, discreet. Even though it says Pitts Privates and Beyond on it, that's real small font. We couldn't even read it. We Pits needed our readers to be able to read it, yeah, that's which is a good, really thing. good marketing. Pits, really private, and beyond. good marketing. But you know who created Lumi? I do not. Ob Jen. Mm. She knows female. She knows, she knows stank. She knows stank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think that it, it, what's helpful is it's got a one of a kind pH optimized formula. Okay. Yeah. You know about that? I re- I don't, but I sure want it, my pH optimized. Well, pH lower number acidic higher number basic. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what makes it optimized, but I'm thinking there's got to be smell related to one of those pH extremes. So it's going to help you out. And we're going to give you a code DMA to get $5 off their starter pack. And I think that you're going to appreciate it. Oh, there's other places. Where else would you put whole body deodorant? This lotion. You got Um, the under boobs. The pits. What do you think about? What are we talking about? Oh, we've got. What's real stinky when you stick your finger in it? Your belly button? (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's great. Or I've got lots of teen boys. Okay. Mm-hmm. What if I leave this outside the shower? I'm just like, hey guys, maybe rub a little under the, under the pits. Because then when they get in after football practice or whatever, I mean. It's covered them. I you literally so, wanted to let my junior high kids drive so I could get out of the car. It was so bad. So yeah. I mean, I, this is, there's endless opportunities. L- endless opportunities. And what they say is uh, 12 hours after a shower, the average person has an odor level. Have you ever heard of odor level? No. I mean, I know, I'm familiar, but no. <laughs> like, we probably have our own measure. Yeah. <laughs> but there's apparently an official measure. And a normal person, it's 6 out of 10. But with Lumi, they found the average odor level was zero. After how many hours? 12. 6 out of 10. From a shower. Huh. 
So I'm thinking that's good for teachers. This is a gift oh. to the teachers of your stu- of your kiddos. It's baking soda free, paraben free, lasts all day. Anyway, this OBGYN saw that normal BO was being misdiagnosed, mistreated. And so as a special offer for our listeners, you're going to get $5 off this Lumi starter pack. Do you know what's in it? What's in it? Solid stick deodorant that I've been using. It oh, I have yeah. like It's got a coconut. It feels like I'm on vacation. Mm. Uh, the cream tube that you tried. And two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash you can throw in your travel bag or in your kids, like if they shower mm-hmm. at school. And deodorant wipes. Oh, I love that idea. A whole lot. Yes. That's great. Travel. Mm -hmm. Like you've been on a 13-hour flight like my son. Yeah. Also, though, if you're wearing like the strapless black dress or whatever, you just don't can't risk any deodorant spillage. You just got a little white there. Yeah. Um, And free shipping. So get $5 off a Lumi starter pack and uh, use the code DMA at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use the code DMA. And how you spell it is L. U M E D E O D O R A N T dot com. I needed to go my spelling bee. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Check it out. With my oldest going off to college, I am using all of my planning skills to get organized, to choose a school. I've got a spreadsheet. Y'all, it's a lot. And it is stretching my planning skills to the max. And one thing that I'm thankful Bruce and I have done. Um, We learned through the passing of my dad that it was important to have an estate plan. And if you haven't created one, I'd love to connect you with Trust and Will because they will help you create, manage a custom estate plan starting at just $199. You go to trustandwill.com forward slash DMA, you'll get 10% off plus free document shipping. What happens if you don't have a plan is all of the challenges when someone passes, it gets decided either in expensive legal proceedings or the state decides and they get, there's really specific things to each state that a trust and will, will customize for you. Things with your care wishes, guardians, final arrangements, power of attorney, make those decisions now. So you don't leave those for your family in the future. And I am so thankful that companies like Trust and Will exist to simplify the whole process because I'll tell you what, it's a lot of legal jargon for me. And what I found is with Trust and Will, it's super simple. They walk you through it step by step. They have live customer support to walk you through through a phone or chat or email. It's accessible and it's affordable, and hundreds of thousands of families have used them and counting with an overall rating of excellent and thousands of five-star reviews on Trustpilot. So secure your assets, protect your loved ones with trust and will. Get 10% off plus free shipping of your entire estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com forward slash DMA. That's 10% off free shipping at trust, and it's spelled out A-N-D, will.com slash DMA. I have, that is so smart. I inappropriately touched Heather's boob oh, this yeah. morning because she talk has. about that? You want to talk about balance? You I walked talk about in my balance today. She has food all over the front of her, and I said, "What's going on here?" And I touched her boob. I said, "Is it too early for that?" I don't know. <laughs> so I'm wearing a white shirt. Cynthia's got a white shirt, and mine has stains on it. And I'm like, "Oh, it must be coffee." And then I remembered, no, I did a shortcut this morning, and I was curious. Have you ever done this shortcut? I, I usually curl my hair and I straightened it today. And I used the straightener on my shirt, but I think <laughs> there was like product product on the straightener and it got on my shirt. Mm. So you're like trying to use it like an brown. iron for your shirt? I yeah. took it on my shirt and I yeah. ironed my shirt with the straightener. Now the irony is my now 12 year old, he got his uniform shirt, he hung it on a hanger and he got out the steamer and he steamed his shirt, mm-hmm. but his mom is using a, a janky chi mm-hmm. to with apparently burnt things on it to iron my shirt. So anyone, do either of you use your hair straightener as an iron? No, I use an iron. You I'm, use an iron, not a steamer, like my No, the steamers, I don't think the steamers work. Do y'all think they work? I love it. I've had like five different ones. I don't think they get the job done. Okay, I'll give you a link to one because it, 
if a 12 year old can do it and it looks good my my one that's 12 and almost 13 he he knows how to use the steamer he doesn't really use the iron but he will use the steamer but heather you're not alone i do take the straight iron you know how sometimes you have shirts you you know (laughs) rachel and i you know how sometimes you have shirts that like the hem like curls on the bottom yeah yeah so i'll take that the straight iron and just go along the hem of the shirt and straighten that out do you know what that's a good idea because i have a couple of those and i don't wear them for that reason right because it drives you know Right. Yeah. Man. And the iron gel remember- make sure it doesn't have product and burnt stuff on it. <laughs> Learn that lesson last today. Easter. I don't well, we weren't here last Easter. I don't know if I said it some other time. I um ironed oh, all yes. my kids' clothes. Mm-hmm. You with, did say this in an with episode. a with Lysol mm-hmm. spray instead of spray starch because I thought it was spray <laughs> starch. They were fresh and clean that oh, we Easter were like morning. I see you. At the local Baptist church on Easter morning. We smelled like an ICU. Um You know they- what we need to update Rachel on? What? Do you know that she came to my house and her dog had passed away and she was sad? She's sitting on her feelings right now, but there was a season <laughs> when she was sad and we shared that in the episode. And you have a replacement. There's an update. It's not a replacement. You got a new doggy? Okay, let's go. A new yeah. dog. Excuse okay. my language. I'm, I don't know the PC for dog talk. I'm not really a dog person. Yes, thank yeah. you all, everyone. I'm not a huge dog person. Like, I'm not going to buy costumes. And if you're listening, I need you to know something. If you want to put a sweater on your dog, that is fine, but you don't need to post that. You don't. Uh, and I'm sorry if that's too much. Mm-hmm. And I also, um, I mean, there's just some, there needs to be some dog etiquette put in but, place. Yeah. But I would say like, do you have a dog? Rachel? We do. Okay. So maybe Rachel and I will connect on this one too, but I bought him one Christmas present for this Christmas. And this is important for your story. Are you okay. Ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so we got a dog. So yes, our dog passed away and but, I didn't, but let me tell my story. Well, I'm going to let you tell it. Okay. I'm going to let you tell it. So I didn't know that I liked my dog until it was gone. You don't know what you got to be gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. sing that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that was real sad. And so then like literally, I don't know if it was that day or the next day I came over. And so, yes. And I was like, I'm kind of sad about, but I'm like, we're out of the dog business. And then long story short is one, a dog kind of fell in our lap. And so we have a puppy fell in your lap all the way from Nashville. From Nashville. That's a long way to and, fall. It fell from Nashville, right? And it's a Pyridoodle, everyone, which is a great Pyrenees and doodle. And when I tell you, I feel like we should put this on social. When I tell you this dog, this puppy, oh my gosh, like it looks fake. People are all the time like, that looks like if you were going to make like this teddy bear dog. It's so cute. It's a really cute dog. But go ahead. What's her name? So here's the story, Money Glory. Before we get to her name, I bought my dog, Charlie, one Christmas present. Okay. I didn't go over the top. No clothing. But his... Collar he'd gotten from birth three years ago was looking janky, and I knew he was going to the border over Christmas. And I'm like, Mike could use a new. He's collar. going to the border. We went to Mexico, remember? With the dog. What? He was going to boarding. Oh. While we went to Mexico. Oh, I, you said the border, and it sounded like <laughs> he was going like down on the border of South. He's going to go visit to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. He was curious <laughs> about the immigration situation at the border, it's and he B-O- was going to go do a little co not B. B-O- like, okay, go, go to boarding. Anyway, Great. I thought, I don't want to, you know how you want your kids to look good? I wanted my dog to look good yeah. at his boarding situation and not all janky collar. Anyway, got him a new collar. So excited. Bruce is filming me. Mm-hmm. Open up the collar. It says Abby, and it has somebody else's phone number on it. <laughs> and I'm like, are you flipping kidding me? What in the world? And I show the boys. Everyone's laughing. And I'm like, and who names their dog Abby? This is on the video. It's on the video. Anyway, I connected with the lady. I'm like, I think I got your collar. I think you got my collar. She's like, who is this? And I was like, I'm just a girl in Dallas. Don't mom alone, lady. And she's like all like sus thinking I'm going to steal her identity or something. Like, I I have your dog. (laughs) Anyway, it was apparently she had adult children and they had bought her dog a collar and the company had messed up and like printed that information on my collar. She still got her collar. She did not get Charlie's collar. All that to say, it was a little bit dicey with Abby's mom for a second. You send me a video of your pup, Mm -hmm. super cute, and then you called it. You said, come here, Abby. (gasps) Wait, did you you already? Who names their dog Abby? And that's what she says on the video. She sends it to me. She goes, who names it? She literally said that on a Christmas. Who would name their dog Abby? And literally, that's what we named our dog. So you, you didn't know that story before you named your dog. No. I hadn't posted it anywhere. No. And Mm-mm. so it's another segment of how are we even friends? How are we even friends? Yeah. 
opposites attract, I guess. Can I, um, but without getting too heavy. What's the name of your dog? Oh, here we go. So my current dog, no, my current dog, his name is Beckham. Like, like David Beckham. Yeah. Um, Our dog before that, that we had for a long time. um, He was our first baby. His name was Dempsey after Clint Dempsey. So these are all soccer players. My husband's like a soccer fanatic. Yeah. And he wins. We're watching. He wins the name game. So. That's, That's amazing. Cute. Those are good. I we're we're watching um the Wrexham uh-huh. show. Welcome to Wrexham. Yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of into soccer right now. Or football is yeah. big. Did you watch Ted Lasso? Oh yes. love. Love. This love. one? Did you watch Ted Lasso? I did, but I didn't make it for <gasps> a shocker. Oh, Cindy. I know. And everyone's like, you need to go yeah. back. Another and reason. Why? Where are we friends? Yes. Yeah. I know. Um, no, it's yeah, that's those are amazing names. And I do need think that we should do a shout out to our side drag people like to our who people? Side tra- our trackers. Oh, yeah. Like, what are your dog names? Like, are your pet names? You know what? Send us a picture. Put it on. Or whatever. Social. Tag us on social. We'll tag it. And we're going to comment on it. Or whatever. But if it's in a sweater, you're going to get extra bonus points. Bonus points. And if it's Abby, how many? I know I'm going to get hate mail for the Abby. Oh, you should get. It's directly to Don't Mom Alone. At and J- the only reason ours is Charlie. We didn't name him. He came with that name. We were told he was a Cavapoo by the Craigslist lady who lied on multiple levels. And he, a cavapoo is uh, King Charles mixed with a poodle. And so King Charles, Charlie. That's how you got there. Yeah. We never got to name him is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get but it. But our cats are Hamilton and Burr. But uh, Eliza Hamilton because she's a girl. Yeah. And Burr. That's cute. Well, I can't um, – I won't tell y'all why her name's Abby because then you're going to feel bad she made fun of it because it actually is kind of a really <laughs> oh meaningful gosh. story. So I won't oh say it because there's always that person that doesn't read the room and then they're like, <laughs> well, I had a great aunt. And that, like I don't want to be her today. But Debbie I, Downer from SNL. But if you knew – totally. If you knew the story, you'd be like, oh, I'm sorry I made fun of that name. So fine. I didn't make fun of it. I was – I think in the moment, the heat of the moment, I was – frustrated that I went out of my way to do this personalized gift and it showed up with dumb Abby on it. I was just like, seriously? Dumb now do you always Abby. check the gifts you order that are personalized now before you wrap them? Well, well, it was already in a, like a little thing, oh, like a, it was pre-wrapped. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's end with something that has some meat to it, people. Okay. What kind of meat you want? Let's end with something with a little meat to it. What's the Lord teaching you lately? How about that? Oh, I like that. That's a question I ask when we're getting into a dinner with a group of friends mm-hmm. and we've just gone on all the fluff and I'm like. Rachel. Yeah. What's the Lord teaching you? Rachel, hit it. What we'll you got? Oh, I got to go first. You need more deodorant? Okay. Cynthia, oh. what's the Lord teaching you lately? The Lord is teaching me lately. Oh, you know what? I, I know the Lord's teaching me lately. I feel like, especially because I just released a book a couple weeks ago, as we know. And, um, you know, like everyone asks you like, how's your book doing? How's your book doing? How's your book doing? And like as far as sales? I, I, I don't know what people mean by that, but probably, oh. I mean, I would be curious uh, too. And I, and the answer, the straight up answer is I'm not sure. Right. Like, yeah. you know, this is someone who's really, you won't know for another quarter or two. Okay. So I don't really know, quarter. but I do feel like the Lord's been speaking this over me because every time I want to get discouraged or I'm not sure how it's doing or whatever, I feel like the Lord keeps speaking over to me like commercial success. Yeah. I mean, okay. But you want kingdom success. And mm-hmm. I feel like he's given that to me because every time I have this inkling to try to get on and try to analyze Amazon or the numbers or whatever, then I will get at the perfect moment a DM from someone that I don't know, just saying, Hey, this meant so much. And I just sent it to a friend that needs this or at a DM from a friend of mine that said there was a mom that um, is agnostic and it was at the swim meet with me and she saw your book cover and loved it. And she asked if she could read it and I gave it to her oh, or wow. someone else told me this 80, it doesn't matter who it is, but as someone y'all would probably probably know one of his, uh, his attorney knows me. It's a guy. And he gave it to this 80 year old billionaire that owns some sports teams and things. And okay. he was reading it and, and that what? he was. And so like, I was like, okay, it's yeah. just cool because one, it's been fun to see it kind of cross generations, men, women, all of that. But it's also been just cool stories of people that needed a word. And I'm like, okay, like the Lord just keeps saying kingdom success. Like yeah. I'll worry about commercial success, but you be concerned with kingdom. And I think that's a word for someone releasing a book, but I think that's a word for us just across life. When we want to judge things by, um, how the world judges things. I think the Lord's saying measure success by me. Mm. That's, that's good. Word right there. There you go. That's it. That's all I got. Do you want me to go or do you want to follow that up? <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> um, I would say what he's teaching me most recently is to prioritize relationship over getting tasks done. 
I know you get in trouble when you talk about Enneagram, but I'm an Enneagram one. And so like, I like to, that was my guess. Know, right. it was kind of my, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I've just had a lot of conviction about, you know, when I do get home from work after my commute and stuff, sometimes the first thing I do is like go to the dishes, go to the, like the, the things rather than even stopping and like hugging my husband or hugging my kids. You know, sometimes I'll, first thing I see is like the shoes that are laying in front of the door. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, he's really working on me to kind of retrain my, my brain, my heart with all of that stuff to, to see the people in front of me first, instead of all the things that need to be done. Yeah. I feel that deeply That's because real. I feel like I can be, I like, she is really good at getting stuff done. I know. Thanks. She says that 30 times a podcast. <laughs> she can really work, but seriously, I do feel like I can be more relaxed and present if my house is in Same. order. I know that's weird. But like, uh, if I can't, like you, Rachel, totally, I'm like, if there's shoes over here and the backpack's still out and all that, like my inclination is like, if you'll let me deal with that mess or make them deal with a the mess, then I am fully, otherwise it's just hanging out there. Right. Like you get all of me. If we can just get this taken care of, then you can have all I know, of Which it, is you know? a wrong priority. Right. I hear yeah. you. Yeah. And I think we all have to strive for different, you know, I'm not strive. That's a bad word, but like there's different things that pop up for each of us that are challenges and. For sure. I think awareness of that is really helpful. I think for me, it goes along with my Enneagram number. I heard this great thing and it's, I don't even know if she's a Christian and I don't know if the Lord bought it, but I think the Lord's using it to embed the truth and deeper message. But it was, um, cause I'm in this season of decisions, like picking colleges with my oldest, picking a high school with my third. And it was, don't worry so much about making the right decision, make the decision right. Mm. And she was saying, we don't have the luxury of living lives twice. Like I can't live a full life. If I have three kids and what if I have no kids or I got married to this guy, I didn't get married to this guy. I went to this college. I didn't like, we don't get to see mm -hmm. a true side-by-side -side comparison. Mm -hmm. And so she said, let's say I have a student they're trying to decide between Harvard and Yale. I'm like, that would be nice. Yeah. But right. Maybe not these days. I don't know. Anyway, she's like, and they choose Harvard and they're like, oh, it's terrible. I should have chosen Yale. And she's like, you don't know that Yale would have been better, mm -hmm. worse, same. Because you can't. You can't know what you don't know. And so I think leaning into instead of trying to make sure it's the perfect decision or mm -hmm. choosing the perfect path, it's like how can I equip myself and my kids to make the best of whatever it is? Yeah. And here's another sob story that goes along with it. My um, son at school was watching Life is Beautiful. Have you all seen that? No. Mm -mm. Have you seen Life is Beautiful? It's an older movie about the Holocaust. It's kind of bummer, but it's labeled a comedy. See, no one's ever thought the Holocaust was funny. But here's the story. I was like, comedy, that's so crazy. But then we were watching it, and it's this guy who is with his son. They're together, and he is told his son when they're in the concentration camp that it's a game, and they have to earn points, and if they get 1,000 points, they get a tank at the end. And he's basically like, these are the circumstances he can't avoid, but he's making the best of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's like when we get purpose and meaning wherever we are, instead of looking to the circumstances to give us meaning. I don't know. There's just a little switch that yeah. for me, I'm always hoping for the perfect circumstances mm -hmm. and then I'll be happy and then I'll be satisfied. And it's mm -hmm. like, how can I find happiness and satisfaction where I am? Right. You know, that's a good word. And I think um, one of my friends that, um, Shout out Tracy. You were there. Oh, we were... Tracy. Hi, Trace. You when... know, you know our Tracy. We talk about our Tracy. Tracy is the one we like tell about Christian things because she is uh, practicing Jew. Yeah, she's oh, Jewish. Right, right. Jewish. Okay. Yeah. My friend Tracy. Okay. Well, anyway, we were at lunch the other day, and um, and I just when you're talking, it made me think about this like marriage. Like I, when I remember when I was younger, married, hearing different girls say like when marriage got tough, you know, at five seven year mark for a lot of people was like I don't know if I picked the right one or whatever. Right. This whole notion like of questioning, like, yeah, life. questioning. I yeah. like that you're saying that. And one of my friends said at lunch today, she's like, you know, here's the thing about decision making: like you pick your hard, like there's hard on either side of the decision. So pick the hard. And, and we were talking through like divorce and those kind of things. And like, yeah, marriage is hard. Yeah. But you know, else is hard is, is not, you know, going They're through divorce, going through divorce and, is like and a kids and money. Too, yeah. And of course, mm -hmm. Heather and I fully understand and Rachel that there are reasons for divorce. Yeah. Like we're yeah. not saying there are not, totally. but I'm just saying we get in this mentality that, well, if I take a different path then it wouldn't be hard. And I think your word is well spoken of, listen, you guys, there's hard on every path, this side of heaven. And so mm -hmm. pick your hard and most often pick the hard you're, you're in probably 
because you already you know You should pick heart. right where you belong and just own your God-given <gasps> space. You should occupy it fully. Look, never heard and of it. you should just recognize that there's good right where you are. Look how that never worked out. Heard of that. <laughs> I know. Because life is messy, but you know what? You know who's going to – he's going to redeem it all is God. He's God. good. He's, he's good. good. He's got a path and a plan. Rachel, have you written anything that we, we can promote? What <laughs> no, do I, throw I, in I, at I the feel end? left out. Like I need to go write a book. You need a PT resource. You got a PT. See, she and I could open a practice. We could do co-treatment. Yeah. I do the speech. She does the PT. And I would bring in the crackers for p- patients that might feel ill for their medications. <laughs> Who are having swallowing issues. <laughs> like it's salty. She can, uh, she can teach them how to make noises from their throats. <laughs> oh, like no. Like these random terrible. noises. I don't know what this noise is that just... And then the mayor <laughs> fell out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> when you taped, when you tape your audio book, Rachel, um, when you when you oh. write a book, but when you tape it, like they have you in these studios and they have like the high tech equipment on you, it and, hears your stomach. I mean, it hears going. everything, and so my stomach was growling because I probably had a diet Dr. Pepper and a saltine. <laughs> my stomach was growling, but my throat would gurgle like that, and they would, and I would be like, nobody heard it. Keep going, and they'd be like, they are in a different room, and they're like, ma'am, can you please start that sentence over? <laughs> Everybody <laughs> heard your burp, please. But they edited out. Why are you out. calling it a throat gurgle? It was a throat gurgle, but oh they edited gosh. it out. Like, they're so gracious. She's going to leave this in and be like, oh, oh, she's going to title it. Throat the time burp. <laughs> Why well, we're not friends. Throat gurgling. <laughs> Rachel, yeah. you're precious. You're a joy. Aww. Yeah. Thanks for getting sidetracked with us, Rachel. Yeah. You're the best. I don't know if this even can close to your expectations. Do you have any last words or thoughts you've been thinking about? I'm going to be on their show. I want to say this. Anything you've been wanting to say? Or a complaint, a story, <laughs> anything. We'll take whatever you've got, Rachel. No, seriously. It's a, it's a thank you. It's an appreciation. When I am having my commute and stuff, like, you know, I listen to your guys' podcasts individually, but like you together, like is my favorite. You know, I love the side chat. I look forward to the first Friday now um, on those on those commutes. Like it really does bring me joy, like knowing I'm going to get a little Jesus, but get a lot of laughter. And so that that's something mm-hmm. to look forward to. So I appreciate the ministry that you ladies are doing. Well, we appreciate that you called this ministry. So you're our people, <laughs> Rachel. That's our new tagline. Little Jesus, a lot of laughter. Little Jesus, a lot of laughter. Yeah, there Ooh, it is. Ooh, that's our next book. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, no more books. I'm done. You can keep writing, but I am finished for a minute. Um, Rachel, I hope you have a fantastic weekend with your two boys, and mm-hmm. we all lean into what we're learning from the Lord. And Yeah, go get that food prep going and get the calendar organized, sister. We're here with you. <laughs> I, want, I want you to let me know how you like your first frittata whenever you have it. Oh, yeah. Don't say it that way. It's it's a, a, she's going to make it real about it. It's going to be real. <laughs> real neat. Okay. Bye. Bye. There it is. There it is. Uh, from breakfast to deodorant to dog collars and clothing to what the Lord is teaching us and everything in between. I hope this has lightened your load this week and that you maybe – Get a little rest. Um, I know spring break is not fun if you have Mother's Day out because it means you don't get your break. But for anyone who has school-age kids, I hope it includes maybe um, doing something different, shaking up the routine a little bit, maybe staying home, maybe a fun staycation. But overall, I hope that you are leaning into your friendships, even if it doesn't make sense while you're friends, that you could share these kind of conversations with each other, that these topics would be ones that you could maybe Uh, bring up what's the Lord teaching you. So I'm going to pray over us and this month ahead. Lord, I thank you for Cynthia and Rachel and for laughter. I thank you for how you fuel our bodies and our minds through conversation and through friendships and through great food. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us this month with any decisions we may have, that you would go before us as you always do and make a way. I pray, Lord, that anyone who is walking through unbelievable suffering or heartache, that you would be their present comfort, that you would hold them and that they would know your love over them. I thank you for all that you do give us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. See you here on Monday. I'm going to have a conversation with my friend Bree over a light topic um, of immigration, like one does. Uh, so I'll see you back here on the podcast. Adios.